Ms. Nisa Muhammad is on the phone line with us. And Nisa, I mentioned earlier today that some men and women have just quit. Quit thinking about being married. Quit thinking about being in relationships. Gentleman wrote this last night, Nisa, on the board, and it got over 100,000 hits. He says, there are countless number of women who are willing to fall in love and have sex with men without a commitment. And to top it off, they will be exclusive to that man. In fact, the National Marriage Project did a study on why men are, in fact, delaying marriage. Mm -hmm. Not just black men, but men in general are delaying marriage. And the reason they are delaying marriage just for that very reason. Women provide the emotional comfort, the domestic comfort, all yep. the things a man is looking for, and so there's no need for him to make the commitment. But this goes back to the training that women and girls need to have, as that we just give ourselves away with no commitment, wow. not even a maybe. <sighs> We're just giving all of ourselves away for nothing. Let me say this. The guy said, why buy the cow when you can get the milk and the loyalty for free? And then also, Nisa, let them know about oxytocin. I mean, they're making bonds with men who have no desire to commit to them, but they're bonded to them and unavailable to other people, even though they're single. No, you're absolutely right. And that's because we don't really understand the power and the significance of a sexual relationship. It's a very different experience for women than it is for men. And so when women are sexually involved with a man, oxytocin is released when a woman has an orgasm. And that oxytocin is known as the bonding hormone. Generally, it does two things. And people know more about oxytocin when a woman delivers a baby. Mm -hmm. When a woman delivers a baby, she immediately bonds with that baby and she forgets about the pain that she has experienced. The same thing happens when a woman has an orgasm with a man. She immediately bonds with him and she forgets this was a booty call. She forgets this he hadn't called her in two weeks. She forgets that you know, he probably <laughs> won't call her for another two oh. weeks. And so she forgets all of that. Those are the two things that are notorious about oxytocin. Bonding and it has an amnesia effect in women. Now men experience oxytocin also, but the testosterone that men have diminishes the effect of the oxytocin. So he knows it was a booty call. And there's no bond bonding that takes place. And so that's why it's so important, especially for young girls, to understand why it's so much more important, so much more valuable to delay sexual activity because they don't know all these things are going on. And they're wondering, why didn't he call me? Yep. I thought we had a great time. He didn't call me back. And the thing is that no religious experience subscribes to this kind of activity for young people. And so neither Christianity, neither Islam, Buddhism, Judaism, so it's almost a failure on the religious entities in our communities to not be giving this kind of information to young people. We're talking to Nisa Muhammad right now. She's the founder of a Wedded Bliss Foundation. And I want to ask you about this idea of being single and unavailable. And I'm finding that many women are now single and unavailable because they're involved with married men or they're involved with maybe a male friend that they're emotionally or, or sexually involved with. And now the game, a lot of guys are wondering, why isn't she interested in me? I'm taking her out. I'm spending time with her. Not realizing this woman is bonded with another man that she's not even in a so-called relationship with. What do you say to the guys about understanding that? You know, that's a great point, Michael. And so part of part of the problem is everything is all screwed up. I mean, we yep. just really... We're doing we have, it wrong. We're doing it wrong, and our children are suffering as a result of us doing it wrong. I mean, what sense is it meant for a woman to be committed to a man that is totally unavailable to her? And here there are good men who are available to her. She just, you know, negates them because she's attached to this man right. who is totally unavailable Because to women see this with other women all the time, Nisa. They're like, girl, why don't you like this guy? It's because she's still got an emotional and sexual relationship with this married guy and this other guy that's her buddy on the side. It's never going to happen for the other guy, no matter how good he is. And that point has to get across. It is not going to happen. And men give women so many clues along the way that he's just not that into you. He doesn't return calls. He doesn't return texts. And so we don't take pick up on the clues. Because of that oxytocin that has bonded us to him, we're thinking in our mind, oh, well, he must be busy, he must be mm -hmm. really working, because whenever he sees me, he just wants me, you know, he just wants this physical relationship. But it's a totally different experience for men than it is for women. And a lot of times for women, we only see things through the prism of our own sight. We don't really understand how men function. We don't understand how a man could be with one woman tonight, another woman the next night, scrap the next another woman the next afternoon. Yep. That afternoon, women don't understand that because we're not like that. But the male body and his physiology is so totally different from the woman. The female is not like the male, and because we don't understand that, 
we're the ones who suffer and our children are suffering the most. And I applaud the mentoring programs that you're doing, especially for young boys around the country. But the problem is this whole mentoring thing is a new idea. Once upon a time, people had parents in their lives who did stuff. <laughs> right, right. They, they didn't need mentors. They didn't have mentors. And so it's an abdication of parents' role to take responsibility for rearing their children to be successful citizens. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to Nisa Muhammad, founder of Wedded Bliss Foundation. And Nisa, last week I posted a blog said, I quit. Men and women who are so frustrated that they have given up on the idea of being married and being in relationships. What do you find the reason why they're most frustrated? A lot of the frustration is that we live in a society that tells us what's right and wrong. And because we are so into the media, into movies and music, you know, the society lets us know the good and the bad of what's going on. So now if we just look at the messages that are given to black people, they're very different messages than what's given to white people in terms of what's good and what's bad. When I talk to groups and organizations, I use this movie, for example, 27 Dresses. Hmm. Fun movie, young white girl, she had been to 27 weddings, she had always been a bridesmaid, she had like 27 bridesmaids' dresses in her closet, and that was her problem. All these bridesmaids' dresses, I've been to all these weddings. I asked young black women, how many of you have been to 27 weddings? Hmm. Nobody raises their hands. How many of you know 27 friends that are married? Nobody raises their hands. Hmm. So while the white community is getting the message about getting married, and the bachelor, the bachelor, the bachelorette, in fact, there are a group of black men who are suing ABC because there's never been a black bachelor. How about that? And so what are our messages about marriage and family? Love and hip-hop, you know, the real wives of L.A., basketball wives, where most of the wives are not even really wives. You know, what are the messages <laughs> we're getting from the media about right. love and marriage and commitment? I agree. It's a totally different message. So you can understand the frustration that our community is having in regard to relationships because what we're told about what's good and what's bad is really what's bad. And we try to go for what's bad and make that a reality in our lives. We're talking to Nisa Muhammad, the uh, founder of Wedded Bliss Foundation. You can check it out on www.weddedblissinc.com. we got it posted on Bays and Live on Twitter and Facebook. What about this notion of being set in, in your ways? Obviously, if, if women, and particularly women of color, are getting married at a later age and less often, can't you kind of get set in your ways? You know, it's so funny, set in what ways? You know, ways that are not providing us with any kind of progress, set in some <laughs> wrong ways. Hmm. You know, it's very easy to say, well, I'm set in my ways. We're spiritually bankrupt too often. And the ways that we have, and we're looking for someone to accommodate themselves to us, and we're single. See, I think part of the problem for black women is that the things that affirm us and the things that help us to make us successful are going to a good school, getting a good job. We can administer. We can be a lawyer, mm -hmm. a doctor, a manager. Those are not the skills that help us to be successful as a wife. It takes a totally different skill set to be a wife because your husband does not want to be administrated by you, does not want to be managed by you, and does not want to be told what to do. How about that? And so women don't know that it's a totally different skill set because we're so used to doing the things that affirm us in our job. Wait, 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 wait. So you're saying it's also the women, because usually when you hear set in your ways, it's something that's usually related to men being set in their ways, but you're making a good point that it's women, too, that are set in these corporate ways of dealing with relationships. You know, if we look at what the problems are in our relationships, it's really a terrible thing because what has happened is that what has affirmed us and helped us to be successful? See, the black woman is not like any other woman. We are promoted through jobs. We can get jobs, and we're all in the work world, and these things help us to feel good about ourselves. But we can't keep a man. Not only we can't keep a man, we can't keep a man happy. We don't, we don't know how to take care of a home. That is old school teaching. These are things that most of us saw growing up from our mothers, our grandmothers, our aunties. We saw them take care of their husbands. We saw them keep a man and happy where he was hurrying to come home to us. You know, if you look at what now the conversations are in the beauty shop as opposed to what the conversations were in the beauty shop it, years and years ago, decades ago, when women talked about what was necessary, share this recipe with me. Let me find out how to cook mm -hmm. that. Because I know my man's going to like That's that. right. You know, we don't do that now. It's interesting. In my classes, we were doing, I give an activity for the husbands and wives. And when people who come to my classes are generally not married. I work with all kinds of couples. Mm -hmm. And so the assignment was to do something wonderful for your partner. So the, the man said, well, I want her to cook for me. So come back the next week. Okay, fine. I asked her, well, did you cook for him? She said, yes, I cooked. 
He said, no, you didn't cook. She said, yes, I did. I said, well, what happened? He said, she took the food that was left over, heated it up in the microwave, and gave that to me and called that cooking. She's like, that's cooking. And we were like, oh, no. Wow.